music you're listening to, Timothy, is German music, and we're fighting the Germans. That's something you're going to have to work out later on. I have just come on an errand from the cabinet room for Mr. Disraeli. He needs a sum of four million pounds by tomorrow. And what is your security? The British government. Tell him he shall have it. If you grant us our wishes, then we will act on your behalf in the United States. And remember, Mr. Churchill, he writes in this letter, remember, we are the only powerful, unified bloc in the United States which solidly backs the British cause in this war. We did it in the last war and we can do it again. All of you will be damned. There is no place in heaven for you. We can't have heaven crammed. You used to say they were the people who ruined England. Did I? What did they do wrong? <coughs> I have to leave that bit out. <coughs> Missed the changes. Wouldn't face them. Left the future up for grabs. From 1936 onwards, he was financed by a little secret pressure group called The Focus. You won't find much reference to The Focus in the history books, but it certainly existed, and there are several files of Churchill's private papers relating to The Focus. The Focus was a group of perhaps 30 or 40 leading British industrialists and bankers and former politicians who decided that Churchill was worth keeping afloat. And how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers, the temples of his gods? The trip back in time to a much simpler age. The British Council releases film for the 1930s and 40s, giving us a rare glimpse of what life was like back then, from a picture of wartime fishermen to their wives. While the men are drying out the nets, their wives are hanging out the washing. A woman's work is never done. The shopping is part of the morning's routine. A time of clearly defined gender roles. Vegetables are plentiful in the village. They are grown in the surrounding fields, which are very fertile and run right down to the edge of the sea. There has always been in England an older England, which was sweeter and purer, where the hay smelled better and the weather was, was always springtime and the daffodils blew in the gentle warm breezes and it's the you feel the nostalgia for it in Chaucer. And you feel it all through Shakespeare. English people achieved an extraordinary thing during the Elizabethan and Jacobean stagecraft. They basically created something which is amongst the elite art that has ever been created on this planet. This small island and a nationality within it, England, produced material at that time which is comparable to the Greeks and is acknowledged by the whole world to be comparable to the Greeks. The government's final warning to Hitler has been ignored and a state of war once more exists between Great Britain and Germany. Now repeat after me. Bugger off. Bugger off. Sod. Sod. Bloody. Bloody. Now put them all together. Bugger off, you bloody sod. Bugger off, you bloody sod. OK, you're in. Until the mid-50s, I still had hopes. Lingering loyalty to what we represented. Self-delusion, of course. We were already America's streetwalkers. The reason why the Americans always wanted the British in the European community was because they would represent, they thought, the ideas of free trade and free markets, which would mean that the community would never be closed to American goods and American capital and so on. It is childish nonsense to say that a British government rules Britain. It's nothing to do with British government or the British people. The government of the world 
is the financial government, the power of money, and of money alone. I, I'm not a Puritan by any means, or a moralist, but to me, uh, the idea, for instance, of short skirts and things like that, this seems to be, we seem to be selling our morals in return for a mess of uh, cultural pottage in a way. What greatness had not floated on the ebb of that river into the mystery of an unknown earth? The dreams of men, the seed of commonwealths, the germs of empires. The elite has gone global and sees itself as part of a global elite. And the traditional brokers of power, from a university lecturer to your senior businessman to your senior lawyer and so on, always seem to be on the side of giving the line away. And that's because in the present day, it suffices and works for you to be on the side that gives away what the past has bequeathed to you. Mass immigration into Britain began with the Nationality Act in 1948, which was passed by the Attlee government. And Attlee, who was the then Labour Prime Minister, in a landslide victory that Labour won immediately after the Second World War, said that if the races of the world are mixed together, there will be no more war. Can, uh... Member of Parliament for Lewisham in, in 1959, and that had been an area in which there'd been big West Indian immigration. Well, one part of Lewisham, I remember, uh, Ladywell, really seemed to change in the matter of a few years from being overwhelmingly white uh, to being predominantly black. The way in which a familiar street, you know, suddenly looked totally alien uh, was, for lots of people, just utterly confusing. In an era of globalization, of political interdependence where the world is ever more swiftly opening up and the cliché about a global community becomes an economic, political, often social reality. The forces shaping this world at this moment are so strong and they all tend in one direction. This was a deliberate policy to transform the country and you meant it to be so. We must be mad, literally mad as a nation to be permitted the annual inflow of some 50,000 dependents who are for the most part the material of the future growth of the immigrant descended population. Britain has a multiracial and multicultural society. In my opinion, UK is more multicultural. There's a mix of, it's not just British people, there's there's other cultures like Filip um, Filipino people, Indians, Pakistanis, etc. And in our country, it's just made consisting of our own people. Britain is turning into a color-coded society with the UK's whites and ethnic minorities choosing to live apart. That's according to a new study that warns of comfort zone segregation, which could lead to division and hostility between the communities. So do you feel that you are British? I identify myself as Muslim. Uh, if, I, if I was born in a, in a stable, you know, I'm not going to be a horse. If I was born in Nazi Germany, I'm not going to be a Nazi. I mean, this is just an island I was born in. And the experiment goes something like this. We as white people will set aside all of our in-group preferences, all of our tribalistic in-group preferences, to facilitate a multicultural group. Which means we are going to put principles above tribalism. We are not going to have any in-group preferences. In fact, the pendulum has swung so far the other way that whites now, in fact, have an anti-in-group preference in that they will vote for somebody who's not white in order to prove that they're not racist or not bigoted or <clears throat> to get on the multicult train. Political correctness works when minorities aggregate together in a vanguard way. It doesn't work when majorities fall and stagger into minority status and then look around for allies now that they are themselves a minority because these things are not about fairness and equity. They're about who can set the standard and the tone for the cultural domination of a civic space. I 
I must begin by acknowledging those who have been calling for greater diversity in the arts and on television in particular for many years. The biggest things about the modern world are partly a result of television is that people live in a tiny time slice of the present moment which they can carry forward with them but uh, nothing remains and there's nothing in their experience which, which reverberates down the centuries because the centuries to them are completely dark just unillumined corridors from which they stagger into the, the single little sliver of light. What happens at night? I've been, I've been hearing all sorts of horror stories. Oh people yeah? People burning down no, houses. No, people, and... ro people robbing bikes, bikes, robbing motorbikes, robbing cars, cars people, get, people getting shot. When we talk about social mobility, we've got more families from minority ethnic groups who will become upwardly mobile. It's not true of white working class. And that's another issue. At the same time, in popular culture, the working class is everywhere, successively demonised in soap operas or reality TV or whatever. The working class itself is, is, is served up as entertainment whilst being simultaneously demonised. There was a specific problem in places like Rotherham, and this, these are here was where Pakistani men target vulnerable young white girls and they view them, quote his words, as easy meat. He was pilloried for these comments, including by a lot of people in your party. Who now has anything to say about the deindustrialization of this country and the destruction of manufacturing jobs under the Thatcher government? Uh, who can reverse it? Who can do anything about it? Who will say anything uh, on this panel about the catastrophe of, of mass immigration which has changed this country irrevocably into somewhere completely different from what it was? They won't talk about it. What's happened is that a substantial section of the chads that you wrote about have become black. The whites have become black. A particular sort of violent, destructive, nihilistic gangster culture has become the fashion. And black and white, boy and girl, operate in this language together. This language which is wholly false, which is a Jamaican patois that's been intruded in England. And this is why so many of us have this sense of literally a foreign country. And people know this, but I would like to state that both I and the government totally disagree with the sentiments of the petition and reject, particularly reject the idea that anyone's trying to turn this country into a Muslim one or any other type of country that it's not. If the soldiers who stormed the beaches in Normandy in June 1944 could see England as it is today, they wouldn't have gone 40 yards up that beach. White Brits now make up just 45% of the capital's total population. I therefore declare Sadiq Khan to be elected as the new Mayor of London. London is the greatest city in the world. I'm so proud of our city. I'm deeply humbled by the hope and trust you've placed in me today. Pichi. I'm heartily ashamed for getting you killed instead of going home rich like you deserve to, on account of me being so bleeding high and bloody mighty. Can you forgive me? That I can, and that I do, Danny. Free and full, and without let or hindrance. Everything's all right. First, will I question with you about hell? Tell me, where is this place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but whereabouts? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self-place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that are not him. Oh, come, I think hell's a fable. But, Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned and am now in hell. The truth of the matter is, is that the great unknown guilty consciousness in our own society is we should have made peace in 1941.